up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's No Name back out again with another Giants update video. Couple announcements, first things first, of course you notice, once again, just like last week, I've kind of been bogged down and with just a lot of real life stuff, you know, becoming busy once again in my life so to the point that I did not have the time for the second week in a row to really get to the subscribers suggested video this time, not selected. It was a suggestion box, literally just like last week, man, you know, just two straight weeks in a row where when the weekend came, I was hit with so much stuff to do that I didn't, I didn't even know what to do with my time. Like Friday, you know, I got, you know, I'm tutoring again, which was the job I had before COVID struck. And obviously because I'm kind of like a private tutor, I travel to different people's places and whatnot. I had to take off and even families wanted me to take off because they, they were worrying about their safety as well. Uh, finally got it back rolling. I'm back doing that two days a week now, Friday being one of them. So that took up literally all my Friday. Couldn't really do anything there with when the DeAndre Baker news broke. Saturday, you guys know how it is. I've said it before, Saturday is my just busiest day overall where I just take time to do stuff around the house. I clean the entire house, every single object in here, um, other chores that there might be with the family and whatnot. And then Sunday today was my mother's birthday. So it was just a really busy time all around and I really only had time to do live streams because you know, it's simple. It's like, I click go live, I do it and then that's it. Not really editing needed. But for this, this here, I had to get a video out. Also, you know, for this announcement portion at the beginning, hope you guys are sticking with me through this. You all know I will get that video done. I mean, I always do. Whenever I say I'm gonna get something done for you guys, I get it done. With all that, Announcement out of the way and a uh, couple notices of merch is available and uh, memberships are available. Let's actually get into the video. So the Giants are signing three new players to the team, including a familiar face in Ross Cockrell, the cornerback, uh, and two undrafted free agents in wide receiver Cody White and offensive tackle Jackson Dennis. So let's start off with Ross Cockrell here, right? So obviously, if you're a Giants fan, you probably know who Cockrell is. You remember him from the 2017 season when he was the CB number two. I think he was uh, left cornerback. Let me check real quick with the Giants. Yes, he was. He was left cornerback. He played alongside, uh, I want to say Jenkins that year, but Jenkins might have been injured because I just know our secondary group that year uh, was busted up a little bit. But he did he did an admirable job when he was here with the Giants. He missed 2018 because... um. He was kind of on injury reserve the entire 2018 season for Carolina, and then in 2019, he did play for Carolina. Alongside, funnily enough, our new number one cornerback in James Bradbury, so they have rapport there. They know how to play with each other, know how to cooperate with each other, and even talk to each other in the locker room and whatnot. Don't be surprised. I was live earlier today on Big Blue Jabroni's channel. He suggested this. Don't be surprised if it was James Bradbury that maybe went up to the coaching staff, went up to Dave Gellman, Whoever he went up to and said, hey man, I know we need cornerbacks, check out Ross Cockrell. I know you guys had an experience with him, I do as well. He'll be a good fit here. Now, Cockrell is not like the signing um, that we did with Shaquille Taylor, who was more like a, a, he was a free agent, but not exactly as a proven guy as Cockrell was. Shaquille Taylor, who I thought at the time when we signed him would have a really good shot at the number two cornerback position. Ross Cockrell has an even better shot than that because he's actually played it for the Giants before and he's had the experience with Bradbury and he's just more of an accomplished player than Taylor was. Cockrell very well maybe from this point on going into the 2020 season is going to be our number two corner. The stats you need to know about him real quick and the reason I say the stats you need to know, his two most recent seasons, I think those are the ones that are most indicative of how he might play now. 2017 with the Giants where he Played in all 16 games, started 9, had 3 interceptions, with 11 passes, defended, 50 total tackles, 37 solo, 13 assisted, 2 tackles for loss. And then last year in 2019, where he once again, you know, he played with our number one guy. He played in 14 games, started 11, had 2 interceptions, 8 passes, defended, 62 total tackles, 48 solo, 14 assisted, and three tackles for loss. So you compare the two seasons, very, very similar, despite, you know, one of them he's coming off of an injury and, you know, one of them he's two years older than he was before. Very similar seasons. In fact, even though he had more interceptions by one, a career high in 2017, I'd argue he had a better overall season in 2019 because of the tackle numbers. But that's not looking at the tape, you know, this is just me looking at his numbers in general. And I gotta say, I hope he can recreate that or just be what he was last year and what he was in 2017 for the Giants or even better. Again, this year entering in 2020, I mean, we need it. Standing at 6'1", 190, good size to him as well. 
Uh, Ross Cockrell definitely enters and, like I said, a main contender, if not the contender for that number two cornerback spot. His main competition being guys like Corey Ballantyne, Chris Williamson out of this year's draft, and a couple of undrafted guys that we got early in the year. I'm not even sure if they're still on the team. You know, guys like Askew Henry and whatnot. But that is his main competition. Unless they ship Darnay outside and have Darnay compete for that as well. But if that's what it is, Cockrell got it in the bag. And I have more confidence in him than I do anybody else going for that spot right now. So very happy with the signing. Definitely very cost effective. And pretty good move on the Giants here when they were kind of driven into a corner. Now as for the two other moves that the Giants made. Uh, Cody White and Jackson Dennis. I'm gonna get this straight off of Giants.com as I do with a good amount of my stuff I mean they compile a lot of good information here and read off to you what they had to say White 6'3 and 215 pounds was signed as a free agent following the NFL draft by Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs who waived them on July 29th White is the older son of Sheldon White a defensive back who played six seasons in the NFL including the 88-89 season with the Giants Cody White, who played 35 games with 26 starts at Michigan State, uh, he finished his career 7th, ranked 7th in MSU history with 147 receptions, 12th with 1,967 receiving yards, and tied 16th with 12 touchdown catches. White combined 2,115 all-purpose yards and had 5 career 100-yard games. In 2019, he was named honorable, uh, mentioned all Big Ten after finishing fourth in the league with 67 catches and 922 yards and six touchdowns and all career high totals. Now, part of the reason I'm just reading it straight off of Giants.com and going in with a little bit more uh, research is because I still think it's a three-man race in the uh, in terms of the undrafted free agent wide receivers. In terms of who's gonna go and try to make the fourth or maybe you know the fifth and sixth wide receiving spots. Because we know the top three, we know number four is most likely going to be Corey Coleman if he stays healthy. I guess you can count Cody Core in there, but Cody Core is really there for his special teams talent, which is important. Uh, the other two, three spots, it's really a matchup between, in my opinion, still Benjamin Victor, Dar Dar Derek Dillon, and Austin Mack. Couldn't speak there for a second with Derek Dillon. Um, and now with uh, Cody White and the guy that we signed a couple days ago, the other wide receiver whose name is slipping my mind, they're definitely in there. They're definitely going to compete, and that's the reason the Giants brought them in. They're trying to have as much people in there as possible to drive up competition and make these guys perform at their best level. And hey, if White or the recent other wide receiver signing outperforms these guys, then it was a good signing anyway. But I really think they're just there to be camp bodies. Um, if they prove me wrong, I'm all for it. Let me know what you guys think on the Cody White signing. Nothing here really stands out to me personally. As for Jackson Dennis, this is what the Giants.com had to say about him. Dennis, 6'7", 308 pounds, was signed by the Arizona Cardinals following the draft and was waived on July 26 when the team cut its roster to 80 players. Dennis played in 40 games with 24 starts in 5 seasons at Holy Cross. In 2019, he started all 12 games at right tackle for an offense that averaged 135.9 rushing yards per game and scored 18 rushing touchdowns. Now on Jackson Dennis, very similar feelings that I had with the Cody White signing. Now I will say, because he plays offensive tackle, I 100% try to go on uh, Google you know, and trying to get some type of draft profile on him, trying to see what draft scouts had to say about him and whatnot, because just like Cody White, I never heard anything, but because he's playing the tackle position, I just want a little bit more information. As of right now, nothing much. Literally nothing is popping up, and I'm not paying for PFF Edge or whatever they call it, who that apparently has actual information on him, because everywhere else, not really anything of substance. I think mean, in the case of draftscout.com, literally just a blank page. So I could not, in my endeavor to find more information about Dennis, actually find anything about him. But like I was saying before, just like Cody White, 100% this is a signing for uh, camp body, but also for depth. With the opting out of Nate Solder, we now have need for more depth on the offensive line because the right tackle position is kind of thrown in the swing right now. We expect the person to be starting at right tackle first to be Cam Fleming, but then we uh, know that maybe Cam Fleming might not be the starter for the entire year. And in the case that he is the starter for the entire year, the guy that's gonna be behind the left tackle, Nate Solder, is either going to be Matt Pert or Nick Gates. But then Nick Gates might at some point start at right tackle during the season. And then Matt Pert is going to be behind Nick Gates in terms of the right tackle. And who's going to be behind 
uh, Andrew Thomas would it be Cam Fleming then we just need a little bit more depth I feel like and this is what the Giants are doing there he may or may not make the roster but this is completely a depth move just to have somebody back there just in case the worst case scenario happens and I could only respect it not really anything much to say about it there but you guys let me know what you think once again a quick update video just to get something out there and the little announcements at the beginning to let you guys know what's up that's it for now I'm out Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.